it's gonna start. So uh, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Kaya Yankole. I'm a project coordinator uh, at the Association for Developing Voluntary Work in Novo Mesto in Slovenia. And uh, welcome to the second day of the training for the TEDICOM project. Uh, TEDICOM is short for Teaching Digital Competences in Adult Education. And the project strives to increase the resilience of democratic European societies to resist fake news campaigns, disinformation, hate speech, and automated boot campaigns. Uh, it does so by empowering adult activists to have better understanding of digital media and the risk and opportunities. So this training this week will allow us to present the project and important topics connected to the project to the wider range of professional and also to learn from their feedback. Today's topic is cyber safety and digital competences. It will be introduced by a Slovenian speaker, Ms. Maja Vreča, and she will talk about the basic digital skills we need to keep safe online and also about internet media literacy and much more. So she will tell you more about it. Uh, Maja Vreča has been employed at the Academic and Research Network of Slovenia. And she is also a long-term partner in the Center for Safer Internet, Safe.c project. So I will now pass the word to Maya and welcome Maya. Thank you. Welcome to everyone. Actually, I would like to know how many of you is there. I, I can see there's 22 persons in whole, so including me. Okay, great. Um, it's my pleasure and my privilege to speak to you. It, look, it looks like a very nice community. <laughs> I'd like to be part of it. <laughs> uh, so, okay, I'll uh, open my uh, presentation now so we can start with from the beginning. And then, uh, Okay, uh, and I'll present myself a little bit more. Uh, I work for Academic and Research Network of Slovenia now for, well from the end of 94. So it's a quite long term thing. And I used to be uh, for years, like 20 years, head of basic user support. And I was mainly teaching or helping teaching people how to use internet. Uh, well, now I changed. Uh, now I'm teaching people how not to use internet. Uh, because we found out quite soon, already in 95, that this is becoming a real issue. Not how to use it, but more and more how not to use it. So today is going to be uh, not that much Technical, okay, includes some technical stuff, but mainly we are going to talk about us and, in, and the internet. So first, uh, when it comes to safety and security, of course, it's like a chain. The weakest link is the one that's going to be attacked and is, is the one that's going to be the first that's broken. And when it comes to digital security and safety, we, the humans, we are definitely the weakest link. This is a fact, and I'm going to prove it today. So for instance, if you are really cautious about your security and you uh, install really well powerful doors that can be, well, you can't break in that easily, uh, it's very likely that uh, when you're going to smoke, on the outside, you're going to leave the house at the back door and leave them open in this or other way. And this is what we actually do. Uh, we are usually quite aware of all this, you know, technical security, you have to install this and that and that and that. And then uh, our minds are not really adapted to the, and resilient uh, to the stuff. So we are actually very, very vulnerable. Uh, to explain this on a very simple case. If you want to break uh, in one company, for instance, you want to put uh, some kind of malware on the computer of some company, what's cheaper? To buy a few of those and just scatter them somewhere on the parking lot of the company or 
to pay a highly skilled hacker. First, highly skilled hacker can be quite expensive and he might or she might or not be successful. While the first case is almost 100% successful. Somebody is going to take one of those and put it in his or her, or her computer in the company to see what's on what's on this uh, well key so this is a very very common thing that happens to us we uh, employ uh, very very persons to protect our cyber security and then we just put some stuff in and we get all the company um, well in problem and in trouble so if you're not a pentagon or this guy you're very likely not to be the person with who is attacked well intentionally but still we need to be aware of this basic basic stuff because why it's so important ah, uh, do you see uh they all this uh, now the left and the right side okay good uh what is this this is uh the data from slovenian cert and unfortunately it's only to uh 2018 because after uh, next two years they have come a kind of different system of uh tracking the data so i couldn't get clear comparison but you can see here what how and what's happening with uh, cyber attacks in slovenia which are reported uh, and i'm quite sure that in your places can be similar what's happening this that i uh well colored yellow the upper parts here we have the comparison between 2014 and 2018 the technical attacks so this is you know paid criminal or somebody attacking technically attacking computers and this is the down part is attacks that are targeting humans and you can see the trend and it's well in the last two years of course this is even much worse so they are not well these technical attacks usually they well they can be done but usually they don't uh, in uh they don't apply that much anymore as they used to be and nowadays they are attacking humans in many many ways and we'll see some of the ways but first still we need some basic digital hygiene so still it is important it's basic you need it but it's not the only thing you need so what's what's the basic hygiene first not one password for all things you are using for every single place you are accessing via password use another one this is it it's it's a key and it should be single key not one for all but one one uh, place one key the other thing is you can use of course the password systems for remembering for passwords and so on there's many ways but you don't have to if you do it's okay but just be aware that then that then this single password is really crucial for accessing the systems but you can use the classical system you can use a very simple to remember strong complicated enough passwords like this one and very important is the first thing simple to remember it's very important so what do we do well it's it's really basic and then for instance one of those you can use for uh, three things for instance for instagram or instead of that you put in the middle twitter or instead of that, you put at the end, Facebook. And this is it. It's complicated long enough. It can be cracked, you know, with these uh, programs for cracking passwords, because they do use these programs for uh, cracking passwords and quite often because they know that we are really lazy. And here you can see this, uh, how much brute force, how much time it takes to brute force enter passwords if it's just numbers four numbers or ten numbers it's just you know click and they are in but if it's for instance 
12 letters combined with upper and lower and uh, symbols and numbers. Just 12. This, this is even not that long. It takes how many? Ooh, three. Huh, whoa. As you can see, the yellow, it's thousands of years. So it's easy. Just don't, don't have such a short parcels. They are important. The other way, uh, the other thing is our uh, home networks. Do use, of course, I know you all have passwords, but still do check whether you have a good system which is secure enough, just verify whether it's, it's okay, because this is also one of the points, uh, entering points, which is not rare. And when it comes to password breaches, for instance, this is the classical thing. It's either computer gets infected in many different ways, well, by entering one of those, or uh, it can go, it, you, you can be victim of phishing, I'll uh, explain later on. You have two simple passwords, uh, or you have a single password for different sites. This is the the main reasons for uh, being well for, for password breaches. And then, of course, you need some basic computer hygiene. Um, I'm quite sure you all have firewalls, but you have to be aware that you need well any any quality kind of uh, antivirus. But it's very important that all of the systems on the computer are updated. Because updates, they don't serve for, for the beauty, even not usually for functionality. Most of the up updates, they are actually because of security. Because there are always, you know, um, when it comes to people that are trying to attack your computers, they're actually digging holes in your computer system. And then the producer of this, well, the uh, of the system is actually making patches to fill that holes, and that's why you need all these, well, updates. We will hate them, but we need them. And of course, when when you are on public computer, even if it looks so safe and secure, like in this library, you have no idea who is taking care of all those computers and whether all your data can be kind of uh, misused on these computers, whether uh, somebody who's going, uh, coming uh, after you on this computer can use some data you left there and so on and so on. So be aware. And the same goes for uh, public networks. They might be safe and secure, but probably they're not. Most of them, they are not well secured. So when on public networks, use VPN or vi uh, virtual private networks for transmitting the important data, uh, like passwords and so on. So be aware that you should be you know, cautious about all these things all the time. And of course, uh, do have backups. What is backup? Backup is a copy of the important data on some kind of media, doesn't matter what it is, but it needs to be disconnected from your machine. Because when the machine is attacked, if the disk uh, that has backup on it is connected to your computer, all this data is can be uh, well either locked or stolen or something like this so be aware of that and backup means two versions of backup always because well as you know with technical stuff if you have just one you never know what happened to it and if anything happens to you anything unpleasant react react as soon as possible because uh, like in the snow, we are leaving really tracks on the net. And the longer you wait, the more new data is going to cover all those tracks. So if something ha happens, react soon. Now this is, if there is any Slovenian listening to this, this is where you, for instance, uh, go and report uh, your problems in Slovenia. 
uh, but I can't tell you for your countries, you have to find out who is your center for reporting the problems and asking for help. So scams, as I said, we are the weakest link. And so the scammers are incredibly efficient and they are really working hard and a lot. Uh, mainly basic target for them is uh, to, um, to try to persuade you by offering you lots of money or big winnings or something like that. It might be, of course, uh, other reasons like uh, charity reasons, uh, love, uh, sex, uh, fears, well, anything, all of, you know, of our, well, weak points can be attacked, but mainly it's about money, mainly. Cryptoviruses at the classical style, they usually attack our curiosity. Uh, now it's again happening more and more in Slovenia, although last two years they were not so uh, proliferant when it comes to cryptoviruses, but a few years ago it was incredible amount. What is that? You usually get via email, maybe also some other places, but it still seems that email is still the main, the main thing how they are targeting us. And what they do is they send you kind of a mail that makes you curious and says open the attachment. You just click and open the attachment, you install that thing, open it, and you don't. Then you will get the message, oh sorry all of your private data is being locked and if you want to get the key for unlocking it well just pay some pay some little sum in uh, some kind kind of like bitcoin or something else but now they're mainly targeting targeting a bit bigger companies not just individuals uh, lately before it was more to individuals and in the case you have all the uh, backups of your data, it's for you like, leave it. I have my get backups. If you don't, and the really important, uh, usually you have no way of unlocking those files. They're usually really, really, well, cryptic to the point they can be decrypted by anyone. Then the other thing which is quite common is phishing. This is very, very common thing. Uh, I'm quite sure also in, in your countries, in Slovenia, it's on a daily basis. What is phishing? Phishing is when they are trying to persuade you in a way, uh, it can be through email, through coming to wrong web pages, or through, uh, well, social media, anyway. They're trying to persuade you that there is something very important for, for you to uh, attach you well and to uh, persuade you to follow the link. and then you come to a place a page usually which is uh, either infected by something or usually they're trying to persuade you that you leave the data there like for instance uh, you get a message from your bank that you that there is some changes and you have they have to verify your data so you just follow the link go to that link and then you fill in all the data all your uh, passwords uh, keys and so on this is one of the things or uh, you have some problems with email go and follow this uh, because otherwise you're going to lose data or something like this and usually what they do first they catch us because we are curious we open wrong things and then they catch us because we are uh, reacting too fast and in this case we should stop and think and ask someone do you think this might be the real thing because it usually is not so be aware of that and for instance in slovenia in uh, last days uh, there is a huge amount of scams uh, where the fake microsoft technical support is calling so they're calling you like we, with in english with indian accent thick indian accent uh, explaining you that there is have something heavily wrong with your computer and they got uh, they got a report that from your computer there is kind of 
bad things coming out or, and uh, that they, they have to intervene. Uh, so they ask you to allow them to, uh, ex to have a remote access to your computer. Um, but it's a fake, it's a scam. And uh, there were many cases in this days in Slovenia in last weeks that actually people were uh, scammed. Uh, two persons paid uh, seven more than 7,000 euros each. Uh, one, one got uh, the card number stolen and so on. So yeah, it can be very, very unpleasant. And of course, uh, while this is unfortunately in Slovenia, I couldn't get Slovenian, I couldn't get any English version of this. You are the winner. We are all the winners of all kinds of lotteries. I won the Spanish and German and uh, British and, in, well, you name it lotteries and never paid the lottery ticket. Well, it's not happening. But we are so easy to, to believe that we are lucky. Or this. This is very, very common as well. Wishing you all the best. Google, not me. Or good investments, loans, you need loan. They are, you know, they know our needs, especially now during Corona. They were, uh, they were quite often uh, tar targeting our fears of Corona specific ones and they were connecting, connecting this bad things to our corona fears so they know what's happening to us and of course they all know we like to buy cheap things that are actually intentionally extremely expensive like micro course bags well they are expensive because not because the production takes a lot of money no They're expensive because they are a status symbol so you're trying to buy a status symbol for a small money and usually you don't succeed. Usually you don't get even that bad, but you get maybe something else or your credit number can be stolen and so on. Uh, and they are targeting even scientists and researchers and so on. I was a few years ago when I was lecturing in one uh, um, conference in Trieste, not Trieste, uh, Venice, and was uh, and it was e e economists and it was a conference and it was I was uh, talking about the security and safety and I suddenly got well dozens and dozens of uh, this kind of letters. It's actually fake scientific uh, papers. They are they are all fakes or fake conferences. Until then, I didn't know how many of them exist, but it's all fakes. You get invited to zillions of places because they found you in a place. Oh, new one. Because the researchers need to put lots of uh, different articles into, into different scientific papers and so on. So scammers know that scientists are, in this case, also perfect targets and researchers. And of course, have you seen this? This is a cute one. It was uh, issued in New Yorker in 93 on internet. Nobody knows you are a dog. Well, it's, it's actually kind of true. Um, love scams. Love scams and uh, extortion scams are quite, quite common things. For instance, this one was used for extortion scam. This exact, this is fake uh, Facebook uh, profile. Uh, and it was used by uh, Nigerian uh, mafia to, well, criminal uh, company to attack, uh, well, men. So this nice lady would approach them and then, uh, well, you know, they communicated first via Facebook and maybe via chat or something. And then she invited them, well, to Skype. And she already, well, she was already there a bit, um, well, not completely undressed, but close to it. And she would ask, 
a gentleman that well he he should do the same and well at the end there was this note everything was recorded if you don't want that want that we we tell all to everything and show all, all this to your family your friends your boss everyone hey so this is the real real extortion then you have these love scams where uh the lonely ladies would be approached by um well nice doctor on a mission somewhere in africa broken heart well the child they had he had with uh, his previous wife who is still uh, with his wife and he he's really sad and he's lonely in this remote place and so on and you know it's it's something that you really can't say no to you know this this lovely guy warm heart hmm. yeah well this is an industry you, you have to know that of course there's also false false uh this or fake extortion where they tell you that they recorded you uh, when you're masturbating uh, when uh, watching the porn site and so pay if you don't want to have problems with that they even don't have to have anything because many of people actually do pay without them the scammers having any any recordings at all but what's good about scams is that they follow similar patterns. You have like 10 dozen classical patterns that scammers use on and on and on. They occasionally invent a new one, but not often because they don't need to. Because we are so, there's always new people who are going to fall for the old, old scams. So let's learn about that. And then the next thing privacy and the issues connected with that when it comes to the internet they all say well they keep saying um, that we are uh, producing content what is the con this content we are mainly as individuals producing for instance online on social media pictures of breakfast this is one of the most popular uh, content we are producing selfies very very normal content we are producing or we are telling everything about ourselves for instance what's going to happen to the, the family of this girl well um, we go to to grant to my grannies every weekend we live on Tantereva. 17 in Indiana. Hmm. They are probably going to have visitors in one of those weekends, and she's not going to be the first or the last one. And it's not just kids sharing all the personal data. What do we do? We are quite often sending before we go to the holidays, and when coming from holidays, and while being on holidays, this is the, the time we really like to share our happiness. We are so happy we are going somewhere. Eee, I'm going tomorrow. I'm so happy. I'm I'm getting up so early, going living. It's going to be beautiful. And then sending pictures from our vacation on and on. As a nice, we're not so clever as well. Or we are sharing our cat pictures and videos. You know, the internet is invented mainly for sharing cats. Everybody knows that maybe some puppies but cats are the winning thing everybody wants to see some more cats but okay this was what we are sharing intentionally this is what we know we are sharing but when sharing that what are we sharing really sharing well we all have this beautiful very practical gadgets that know everything about us they are full of beautiful apps we really know, need. Like, where's the nearest pizza? How many steps did I make today? Uh, what's my calorie intake? Uh, well, everything. Send me the new cat video. So we have full of different apps and they're all free. That's why we have it. It's so practical, they're so useful. 
Well, this is a pack of spies and you know it. I'm contrary, you know it. I, you're, I see your faces, you know it. But do you actually also read terms and conditions of all these beautiful, very, very useful apps? I'm quite aware that most of people never read a single term of and condition, well, a single uh, this, because they are in intended not to be read. And do you have maybe um, some things like this at home? This is really, this was on Twitter. Uh, I guess when you study the Internet of Things, it's only a matter of time before you study the Internet of Toilets. It has a Bluetooth connectivity, heating elements, spray, sprayers, and camera. What could go wrong? And this thing is actually connected to the Internet. I mean, and intelligent beds connected to the Internet. Um, what could go wrong? And well, and then they find out that all these smart doorbells are very, very, very vulnerable to attacks. Usually the security when it comes to Internet of Things is really horrible. And for instance, this uh, little gadgets they put uh, into the kids' room, so the, the gadget is listening to the kid whether everything is wrong. This is quite often attacked by hackers. So somebody from somewhere, China, is talking to a kid or listening to a kid because you feel that kids are going to be more secure because of that. What's wrong with that? And uh, I don't know whether we, you saw this uh, site anytime, but I invite you to go and check your own cat and your neighbor, neighbor's cats. Uh, it has the titles you can see. I know where your cat lives.com. And then you, oops, you can see, for instance, well, this is center of Ljubljana. You can see exact from uh, there where the picture was taken, uh, the cat, and of course, the old environment. It, usually, all these uh, things are full of kids as well, of different. So, actually, it's easy because of metadata to place, well, all the things we are actually sharing where these photos were taken. And well, we are practically sharing our thoughts, our minds, our hopes, our fears through all this because we are letting the big industry to get all the knowledge about us. But Quite often, it's the end. I, I can hear in when I'm lecturing people, oh, I'm not a criminal. I have nothing to hide. Come on, go and undress here. You have not, nothing to hide. We are all humans. We are all naked under our, uh, our clothes. But you don't do it. On the internet, you do that. You're not just undress yourself completely. You actually open your mind to everyone. And not just if we let go other problems connected to that. The loss of privacy may mean loss of security, and usually it does. So online, privacy is safety and security. This is it. Uh, but big companies are very, very happy to persuade us to share everything as much as they can, as uh, uh, persuade us as, as long as they can. Because what they do is uh, they actually try to get as much data they can about everything, about our habits, our uh, hopes, our ideas, our fears, our desires, shopping uh, habits, daily habits, everything, changes in our moods. Everything is being collected and then rearranged and then put into some kind of categories they can sell. They can actually, they keep selling us all the time. Our hopes, our fears, they're being sold. Our desires are being sold all the time. And 
they call we call this big data nowadays uh, the new oil why oil not gold because with oil we know there is side effects with which are really negative and here with big data we can also see that there's so many side effects which are actually negative when it comes to our societies and our personal lives next thing i would talk about is something i would call basic media literacy when it comes to the not not really new media but okay uh, online media for instance what does it mean it means the basic understanding understanding of how things work online. For instance, what we usually don't think about, internet is a public space. When we are online and chatting to someone and sharing uh, on social media or somewhere, we are we are actually usually thinking about our friends, our uh, well relatives or somebody we know we don't usually are aware of that that we share everything to everyone even if we are sharing in closed networks we have uh, we can't control this data anymore it's going to go out somewhere and of course there is no closed network as such because it's used by for instance you are sharing on facebook facebook knows everything about you and maybe anonymized but facebook resells everything about you so it's not it's not your private space it's not your private room it's facebook's room where you're sharing with your friends but still because we are usually in such situation we feel like we are alone we are with our favorite little gadget sharing with our, our favorite friends but we should think this way no we are not sharing with our favorite friends we are sharing with a huge amount of people and we should understand that internet okay internet is the technology definitely it uses technology without technology there is no internet but internet is made by humans, used by humans. Internet is us, us human, humans using and misusing technology and abusing it. So we shouldn't think about something abstract. It's humans. And of course, not everything is true what's online. Do you know this one? this one is really cute it was uh, one of the first really successful viral uh, scams it was uh, april fool made by i think he uh, he was uh, a british artist and he made this beautiful little thing well as you can see it's well it's obviously fake but he called it uh, the, this is uh, that fairy a mummy of that fairy and it was found in a place where it's well known that the fairies live. So people who actually either believe in fairies or would like to believe that fairies exist, were very, very happy to, uh, to share this in millions, tens of millions. And later on, when he decided that, uh, that he would actually post this, well, no, 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 it's just a joke. It was, you know, April Fool nobody was sharing that anymore because we people are fast to believe nonsense but not so fast when it comes to uh well sharing the data that we were fooled we don't want to believe we are, we are fooled and this is it nobody was practically why some people were so how how do you check when you get this kind of stuff for instance well one of the classical things is you go to the hoax pages you just take some crucial basic data uh, like uh, that fairy hoax and then you go through the hoax pages or you go directly to for instance snopes check there or there's other fact check checking pages you can use uh, the last one is just uh, for slovenian uh, things but for instance here they 
those pages uh, I used in this uh, recommendation, they are of different kind. They are checking different kinds of uh, scams. Or you can use the reverse image search, search and check the picture and tr try to find where the picture was already uh, all already used before. So quite often you can uh, find fake things through this. So there's always many easy ways to check this. But usually we are quite lazy to do it, unfortunately. And when it comes to science and research, you have, for instance, this page, which is a very useful think, check, submit, verifying whether this, uh, um, well, magazine uh, scientific uh, thing, uh, paper that connect that you found is actually okay or kind of fishy. Well, I don't know whether you noticed, but I suppose you did, that when you're checking uh, data on one computer or other computer or third computer and they are not all your, your computers, that actually the picture is different because everyone is living in our own closed space. We are not, when we are reaching internet, we are mainly not reaching internet, we are reaching intranet, our closed small bubble. And first thing we actually do mainly well notice about that is this you know basic thing you look for i don't know cheap flight to hawaii and then suddenly on all of your gadgets you you're using your home computer your computer at work uh, your smartphone you get on and on and on well something connected to hawaii did you notice that I'm quite sure you probably did. This is what most people do notice, but usually they don't notice that much the other aspects of this uh, filter bubble. Because we are constantly, con well, supervised, our, we are supervised by all pages we are visiting, uh, all applications we are using and so on. Well, somebody is always, always checking what we are typing. Somebody, well, somebody is always checking what's in our minds all the time. We are well, being under scrutiny all the time. But we got kind of used to that. It's become normalized, which is the worst issue. If you notice that there's something wrong, if you see this, you know, targeted ads and so on, so if you get this targeted data on your computer, if you notice it, it's okay. You know it's there. But most of people, they don't even notice this anymore. It's, it's been normalized. And this is quite an issue for our communities. Because all of our environment is being actually um, modified and presented by algorithms. But these algorithms, they they are not, uh, you know, neutral. They are made by humans with some intentions. And we keep forgetting that. Algorithm, our prejudices, our, uh, well, all the, all things that come into this data are usually magnified by algorithms. So usually also all the bad things. And on the other side, because of this data being filtered for, for us, we get, you know, like horses in Vienna. We don't see the world anymore. We just see what Google and Facebook and Instagram and Twitter show us. Just our filtered little world where everybody agrees with you, but all, where all people have the same ideas. When it comes to this, then why why it's happening? Because it's a business model. Facebook, Google, and all the other big biggies, they're actually intentionally trying to keep us as long as they can online on their well platforms, whatever it is. Because 
uh, everyone is a bit upset if he or she gets, you know, these very unpleasant things, you know, ah, ah, I don't want to see that. But if they are showing you just the things you want to see, that you react positively to, then you stay there. Or usually things, things are promoted that uh, provoke the emotional reactions. That's why, for instance, anti-vax sites and stick, uh, things like that. Because what is more engaging? Uh, Anti-vax, well, guy or girl shouting, ah, they're going all to kill us, you have to protect our babies, you know, this, this and this and this, he's organizing this and they are going to put uh, some kind of chip in your skin and your kid's skin and, or, boring scientist explaining long complicated sentences nothing happening well nobody is going to watch the scientists and facebook knows that so he's promoting the anti-vaxxers for years not just facebook youtube the same which is owned by google and i'm quite sure you all heard of uh, cambridge analytica well, uh, Facebook is a such actually kind of, well, even much bigger problem than just this Cambridge Analytica a horrible story with, uh, well, producing fake profiles and, well, it was a really big story. I, I'm not going to explain it all, but um, Trump and Brexit were are well heavily influenced by uh, the British uh, Analytica or well, this scam. It was kind of scam actually. Yeah. So as they say, say here, we are all kind of entangled in all these algorithms, all of our societies, and we should be aware of that. If we are not, we can't find it. But I think that actually this level of uh, awareness is kind of slowly rising, at least at least in Europe and parts of Americas. Do you know deep fakes? Just watch that. Deep fakes are now used mainly for uh, revenge porn or for producing more and more pornography. You don't need that many porn stars, you just use, made, use heads from somebody else and attach it to uh, the porn star uh, body and have more interesting porn. Uh, revenge, scam, uh, revenge porn is a horrible, horrible thing that are usually um, male ex-husbands, ex-boyfriends and so on. Uh, while well, producing, uh, using the um, material, video material made by their uh, ex-wives, ex-girlfriends, and then combine that with porn actress and then put it in public. Like, you can see what kind of, you know, trend she was. Uh, horrible, horrible thing. And with all this, bubbling, putting together people that have the same ideas, like Facebook is, is not showing you the, what are uh, everybody uh, within your friends actually sharing. Facebook is, share, is showing you just the things that uh, it thinks you are going to react, react to. So, sooner or later, you're having this close community that believes in well, airplanes leaving chemtrails or flat earth, or you are slowly becoming very uh, extremistic because everybody around you being connected to you more and more is extremistic. It's actually happening very much online. And the, one of the reasons why we, we are so much so vulnerable to all this things is our our use of the this gadgets and media 
This is the data uh, from the states uh, from before Corona time, from 2019. The average user of smart or of smartphone, average, not addicted, was besides this uh, all the time he was using uh, computer at work. This is not in these numbers. For instance, like eight nine hours of computer at work, and then plus 4.3 hours every day usage of smartphone. This is average in the state in 2019. In this time, the average user touches the gadget in a way, you know, some enlarge something, tap, close, zip, 2,617 times a day, every day. And 86% of users said that they are quite often wrong or regularly using the smartphone while talking to their families, while talking to their friends, to their close environment. So even when with family, 86% of them are still using the gadgets. These are quite bad numbers. And during Corona, it went worse. And uh, the, all the data is showing that our use of specifically social media is, especially they noticed that, that this went even worse in Corona time. It's especially with kids and young, well, young people uh, but in all generations but uh, with young people it was even worse that actually they are producing uh, fears depression anxiety uh, the feeling of loneliness so actually people are getting more depressed the more they are online on social media so it is actually it's been proven that it's tightly connected that our use of social media, specifically social media, leads to increase in depression, anxiety, and well, also suicidal and things like this, but specifically anxiety and depression. So we should kind of understand where are we? What are the rules of this, this world? I, I think we mainly don't understand it that well. We are kind of, we are being brought to this new beautiful place full of colors, very attractive, but we don't understand actually how it works quite often, unfortunately. And the same goes for uh, kids and young people. They are not digital natives. Yes, they are native, they've been born into that, but they don't understand it. They understand it even less than us. They are usually very fast, very intuitive in clicking, tapping, using things. But um, quite often they are very bad in understanding this. And of course we should help them because um, in our heads is knowledge and on the internet is just information. But I quite often hear that why have the kids learn all this stuff and uh, all these unimportant things? They can all find this on the internet. Oh yes, can they? Can they find the understanding on the internet? Yes, in some small portions, but they need a big picture. And so do, do us. So can we be less translucent? Can we be sharing less? Yeah, it's actually very easy can be safer because of that. It's rather easy. First, if you don't use the app on your phone, well, uninstall it. If you're not using it permanently, just, well, when you're using it, click it and mute it when you're not. You don't have to be tracked all the time. It's not needed. We, we do this just because we're lazy. When you're sharing photos, well, films and that, such things, first check the metadata. 
in within this and don't share the metadata here i have the link where you can find the uh, instructions how to remove the metadata from your cat use well if you're english speaking you can use for instance DuckDuckGo or start page uh, how does it work you google either DuckDuckGo or start page install it it's two clicks away and from then on stop using google completely don't google anymore use this for your all of your uh, inquiries in this case you're going to be anonymized so we are not going to share with google everything you are actually are looking for uh, start page works in a way that uh, it gets between you and google so you send start page i want to see that it sends it to google and then well get it back and it then in get and put it to you and it never shares your ip or personal data with google so google doesn't know who he's serving so we have this wider approach to to the data that actually exists online and you are in the same way be uh, in the same place being anonymized uh, when it comes to DuckDuckGo, it has its own system of search, so it's a bit different. In English, it works well. In smaller languages like Slovenian, it's a bit less useful. So in Slovenian, it's better like start page. It's more useful. Then, or you can choose one of those, of course. There's many of them useful, but I would go for DuckDuckGo and start page. And on every page, there is a zillion of little... Uh, um, well cookies and other small uh, things following you and sharing data about you if you want to know what's that and what it's doing with your data and block those you don't like use privacy privacy badger for instance or ghostery they are both well you have many of those but for instance i would go for privacy badger or ghostery i think they are the the best when it comes in to this field and uh if you're using on your smartphone different different kinds for you know uh, short messaging and so sharing things and so on use signal uh snowden is using it i think this tells you everything if edward snowden thinks it's safe then it is and maybe if you're using gmail yahoo and stuff well you all know google is reading all of your emails and your, of your friends emails mailing to you and well everyone's who is mailing you so better maybe think of things like proton mail which are really secure uh we have a comment here maya uh -huh. okay so yes yuka from finland says that he uses telegram because it's more uh common in his social mm -hmm. circles mm -hmm. telegram is not bad uh signal is of course uh even better but uh telegram is uh, i think the second best when it comes to this uh these things yes so telegram is cool radical cool. Um, with where you have a choice when you have a choice uh use european providers well of course you <laughs> there is no facebook european provider if you want to be on facebook or instagram you have no choice but in many things you have european providers providing you something but we just don't know about them we know just the big ones and we go to the big ones because you are just well uninformed so be be informed use the european one because they have to comply with european privacy laws which are completely different to the american ones and if you understand this then you're slovenian and then this can be useful for you as well um first this is unfortunately just for slovenians because uh, it's well partly in english but mainly in slovenian it's a MOOC on uh, safe and secure use of in, on the internet and uh, we run it twice a year and uh, it's going to be well 
again uh, this autumn in, on 17th of 11. So if you are Slovenian or understanding partially Slovenian, you are uh, really invited to that. And now I would like to show you something uh, which is kind of funny. I'll have to uh, stop sharing and I'll share it on the other parts. Just a moment. So I'm not going to be just uh, annoying, <laughs> but you need some fun too. Huh. You see this? Guiding hands now? Okay. Yeah. Ah, off. Sorry. <sighs> not good. Uh -huh. This should be the one. No. Uh-uh. No. Stop share. Ha. Huh, kind of, no, let's see, no, it's not, sorry, it's just keep showing me the same thing, sorry, ah, this is the right one, now I got it, <laughs> okay, full screen. In today's modern world, you can watch what you're doing, or you can watch where you're going, but you can't do both. And now, you don't have to, thanks to Guiding Hands. At Guiding Hands, we understand how important it is to stay connected when you're on the go. Simply request a Guiding Hand, and within seconds, we'll be at your side, ready to guide you to your destination. Let us navigate your world, so you can navigate the web. Your Guiding Hand will take care of all the pesky distractions that once forced you to look up. We look out for you, so you can keep an eye on the th things that matter most. Enjoy the security that comes in knowing you are finally, truly connected. You'll never have to look up again, ever. That's a promise. Guiding hands, we got this. Just a moment. Ah, stop share. Okay. One moment. Aha, this. No, next. Ah. Is this a coffee time? Uh, yeah, we can have a 10 minute break. Yeah. We all agree. And meet back at 6, uh, 4, sorry, 16, uh, 15. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like that, yeah. Okay. So and so then yeah. we then we have discussion. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we okay. continue. See you in ten minutes. See you in ten minutes. So I would like to thank Maya for her presentation and lecture. I think it was very interesting and there are some um things i didn't know about or i haven't thought much about it um so um uh -huh.